Here's the guide for factoring polynomials. We need to start with the common monomial factoring. Then whatever will be the result, we're going to categorize them as to whether the result is a binomial, trinomial, or multinomial. And we have specific processes under specific results. Then we end it. Let's start with this polynomial. Let's consider this given quadratic trinomial, 2x squared plus x minus 6. And we are going to factor this. Now, in factoring quadratic trinomial, we could actually proceed with the checking as to whether this is a perfect square or not. So that we could factor it using the factoring process intended for perfect square trinomials. And if it's not, we could proceed with the next method. To identify whether this is a perfect square or not, we have two conditions. And these conditions must be met so that we can use the method intended for the perfect square trinomial. The first condition is that the first and the third terms must be perfect square. Now looking at our first term, our x squared is a perfect square of x. But 2 is not a perfect square of any integer. So by this, we can say that this quadratic trinomial is no longer a perfect square trinomial. But if, for some cases... We can also debate that square root of 2, when squared, will result to a value of 2. Okay, This would satisfy the condition that 2 is also a perfect square. So just for this time, let's just uh, consider roots that are non-integer. And let's say, yes, 2x squared is a perfect square. But when we look at the second, or the, the third term rather, we have 6. Even if you say that 6 is a perfect square of the square root of 6 because the square root, I mean the square of 6 is is actually I mean the square of square root of 6 rather is just 6 but there's no such thing as a negative perfect square of any real number this is another proof that this is not a perfect square hence the entire trinomial is not a perfect square trinomial well if you go further to complex numbers, we can say that negative 6 is a perfect square of an imaginary number. But since we are on the realm of real numbers, in this case, this, again, trinomial is not a perfect square. No need to proceed to the second step. In short, let's proceed to the other method. If our quadratic trinomial is not a perfect square trinomial, let's use AC. AC is uh, uh, allowing us to multiply the A and C coefficients. A coefficient is 2. That's the numerical coefficient of your x squared times negative 6, your constant. This will return to negative 12. AC method now allows us to look for factors of this. We can have 1 and negative 12. We could also uh, share negative 1, positive 12. We could also use 2 and negative 6. We could also have negative 2 and positive 6. We can also use 3 and negative 4 as well as 4, I mean negative 3 and positive 4. Now these are the 6 pairs of coefficients when multiplied by their corresponding partner will result to negative 12. AC way allows us to look for the sum of any of these. Okay? Add, add all of these. And if this is, there is a pair, that will result to our B coefficient of 1. Coefficient now, when added, will result to positive 1 is this pair. We have negative 3 and 4. Negative 3 plus 4, that's positive 1. Negative 3 times 4, negative 12. We will be using these coefficients as we move further to this process. But this process here is actually a little bit... Um, longer than the usual because our a coefficient is no longer 1, it's 2. So let me use this discussion here. If we have a quadratic trinomial, we are expected to have two binomial expressions. Now, if we are going to use x and x here, whatever will be the partner coefficients here, x times x will not result to 2x squared. Okay? So some of you might say to only add 2 here, just like that. And if we're going to place minus 3 here and plus 4, there is also another problem because when you multiply the last terms using the FOIL method, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, not negative 6. 
So there's something that we should do. And here's my suggestion. Okay? Instead of x, x, or x and 2x, I would like you to use 2x and 2x here. Now, no worries, because of course, 2x times 2x is 4x squared, not 2x squared. No worries. There is something that we will do later. We'll place both of this. We have minus 3 and plus 4. Again, when you multiply this, aside from 4x squared for the first, your last term should also return to negative 12. This will not return to our original polynomial, but this will return to a version of that. My suggestion here is you look for a pair, I mean look for the binomial wherein there is a common greatest, uh, I mean greatest common factor. And we have this, by the way. We will divide here 2 as the greatest common factor of 2 and 4 coefficients. Of course here, for 2 and 3, it's just 1, so no need to do that. Why we divide that? Because it will be simplified further later. We have here 2x minus 3. What happens here is we divide both terms by 2. So your 2x becomes x and your plus 4 will become plus 2. So when you check this using a FOIL method, first 2x times x, 2x squared. Inner, negative 3 times x is minus 3x. 2x times 2 is 4x, so minus 3x plus 4x, you have 1x or simply x. And then finally, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 6. So using this suggestion of mine, we're able to return to the correct factors of the given polynomial. And we solve this using the AC way because this given is no longer a perfect square trinomial. The next factor we're looking for is for our next subscriber. Subscribe now!